Last week, we started taking a deeper look at Psalm 23. Now, this week, we'll look at a couple of verses that address the primary reason we seldom find ourselves lying down in those green pastures beside those still waters. Hi, I'm Pastor Tom, and this morning we pick up where we left off last week, lying down in green pastures beside the still waters, where our shepherd restores our soul and leads us into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. But as we said last time, we don't find ourselves in that place all the time, and the reason is one of our biggest enemies that we face in that valley, fear. Now let's look at the 23rd Psalm, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Well, now we're getting down to where the rubber meets the road, or the hoof meets the path. Up to now, it's been no lack, lying down, tender green grass, still cool water, refreshment, rest, and the perfect path. But all of a sudden, this perfect path has become a dark valley shadowed in death and filled with fear and evil. Ever been there? Well, one of my many starred and double underlined passages is this one. The key phrase is, through the valley. I looked at that very subject in more detail in an article I wrote some time ago, and I put a link to it down in the comments section if you want to take a look at it. Now, in the midst of a crisis or my trial in life, I can't tell you the number of times that I've forgotten that God has a plan to get me through the valley and not leave me stuck there. But I need to keep moving if I'm going to get through it. Now, if memory serves me correctly, it was Pastor Ray Bentley who said that every mountain we climb has a valley surrounding it. And that's the easiest path up the mountain, through the valley. It's usually the gentlest grade. But my problem is that I forget that fact and I only look at the steep sides of the mountain, the impossibilities, and the darkness, fear. We need to look at this from David's perspective to get the full impact. In the Hebrew, it's the idiom, the blackest darkness, a place surrounded by great peril. Now, in the midst of this, what does David do? He sings out to us a chorus here that should lift each one of us into song. It's only the shadow of death. But how many times I have forgotten that in the midst of a trial and found myself getting eaten up by fear. Now let me give you a great word picture here that you can use the next time you find yourself in that valley of the shadow of death. I've used it many times. In his wonderful book, The Pilgrim's Progress, John Bunyan writes about Pilgrim, his metaphor for a Christian. Walking along a path and on both sides, there are very large, roaring and snarling lions. He becomes fearful and his guide turns to him and says, The lions are changed. They can't reach you if you stay on the path. But if you step off the path, they can devour you. It brings me to mind the wisdom of Peter when he warned us in 1 Peter 5.8. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Because your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. This is a picture I see when one of those valleys comes into my life, and fear is trying to tell me that this is the last valley, the one I'm never going to get out of. Yup, pal, you really missed God on this one. You pushed too far this time. He's not going to bail you out of this one. (laughs) But how comforting that David has been there before us, and he has the answer. He tells us boldly that we are not to fear evil. It's a chained lion that's already been defeated. Even more importantly, we must not forget one little word in this verse, lo-ra. It means no evil, no affliction, adversity, calamity, displeasure, distress, misery, mischief, sorrow, sickness, or trouble. There isn't one thing the enemy can throw at us that that we need to fear. Remember the words of Isaiah, Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed. And you shall confute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. Why? David tells us God was there with him to comfort him with his rod and his staff. 
Some time ago, while preparing a Sunday lesson, I looked up the words for rod and staff, because I thought shepherds only carried a staff, with a hook on one end for catching wayward sheep. What I found was very interesting and helped me to understand what David was implying in this verse. A rod is shave, and it's made from the knot of a root. The shepherd finds one, just the right size, and he polishes it and balances it. And then he practices throwing it for hours. It becomes an excellent weapon against a predator that is endangering his sheep. For David, that represented the word of God. It was there to protect him from the attack of the enemy, to be thrown, used with accuracy, or, if you will, as the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. It's to be thrust at the enemy. God uses his word to slay the predators that try to destroy his sheep. Now, the staff, on the other hand, is that long pole with a hook in it. It's called a Mishnah, and it's primary, uh, primarily used to support one and give balance but it's also for correction and guidance. How often do we need that to be used in the valley as we try to make our way? That hook has been gently placed around my stiff neck many times to keep me from moving through the valley. When given my choice, I'd prefer to sit down and have a pity party with anybody who would want to join in. Or perhaps it caught me just before I was about to bang into something that I couldn't see in the dark. You know, one day God is going to show us all those things in our life that were going on around us in the Spirit during our trying times that we couldn't see. All those things we're going to be glad we didn't see or bump into. That's the wonderful touch of our shepherd's staff, the Holy Spirit. Now, the Lemming translation has a great way of putting verse 4. Even when walking through the dark valley of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me, guarding guiding all the way. I like that. Close beside me, guarding and guiding all the way. What better description of, a, of the Holy Spirit is there? The rod and the staff, the word and the spirit. What else could we possibly need? The answer is nothing. Well, that does it for this week. Now, next time we'll take a look at what God does as we walk through those valleys of life in the presence of our enemies. And the example David gives us holds a much deeper and more significant meaning than it appear, appears at first glance. So our challenge is to remember that when we find ourselves walking through one of those valleys, one of those dark times, that we're not alone. And Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd, has promised us that we're not stuck in that valley. He's going to lead us through it. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our weekly chats, please do and share those times with others to remind and encourage the Bride of Christ to stand up, move ahead, and walk tall, keeping her eyes on Jehovah Rohi. Now, I look forward to meeting you here again next Wednesday morning as we continue our journey through this life, from the cross to spiritual maturity, under the leadership and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, have a great week in Jesus, and God bless.